Charlotte, North Carolina, November 16, 1999. I follow this story. It's one you can't really forget. I'd find myself Googling periodically to see if there were any positive updates. This tragic story happened over 20 years ago. I have to admit, 20 years later, I've matured and my outlook on the situation has changed tremendously. I will elaborate later about that. I don't know too many people who don't know about this story, but in case you don't, here goes. Ray Carruth was making money playing football for the North Carolina Panthers. He's very easy on the eyes. And he was also involved with several women around that time. He had impregnated two. One was a high school sweetheart that I believe he was taking care of the child by her. And I imagine it might have been very financial for him. Then to find that he had a second one on the way, I guess he felt this may cause a financial strain and he just didn't want his pockets stressed. He had to figure out something. He had to try to eliminate the situation. Sharika Adams, 24 years old at the time, was the woman that he had met. He had met her at a pool party, but they were both involved with other people. Sharika was working in a real estate office and she was an exotic dancer as well. Months would go by and the pair would meet up again. A teammate of Ray's was having a birthday party and they decided to celebrate at the gentleman's club where Sharika had worked. He said it was basically a sexual relationship. Ray says they weren't speaking of marriage. They were not even dating. He said they only had sex five times. He said, quote, lust was the tie that bound us, unquote. He said they never hung out, talked on the phone, anything. But we know that when two people get in the bed, one person getting out of the bed can leave with feelings. It seems Sharika had told friends she wanted a family with Ray. She obviously was the one who caught feelings. I mean, I don't blame her. It was easy. He was nice looking. He was a athlete and this was her first child. That was easy. So Ray meets Van Brett Watkins, a security guard at one of the gentlemen clubs. I don't know if it was the one that Sharika was working at. He also began doing odd jobs for Ray. Watkins was from New York and he served prison time. He even would brag about how he killed four people, all hired hits. He was promoting himself as a hitman. Ray only wanted Watkins to beat Sharika up and make her abort the baby. He asked, how much would this cost? Watkins responded, quote, I don't beat girls up. I kill people, unquote. It was arranged, 3,000 up front and 3,000 when the job was complete. Walken said he didn't really want to harm or kill a woman, but he eventually would do it. He actually planned a date with her as well on November 16th. It was part of the setup, like dinner and a movie. Sharika would leave in her car following Ray out of a Stonecrest shopping center that they were at. Ray's car had slowed down in front of her and another car had pulled alongside of her, firing five shots inside her vehicle. A drive-by shooting was part of the plan. 
Sharika had managed to call 911 and tell them that she was shot and that she was pregnant and that she believed Ray Carruth was behind this. She knew. Sharika clung to life. Again, she was eight months pregnant. She would give birth to a baby boy, a son, Chancellor Lee Adams. He came to this world by an emergency C-section, cesarean section. Before lapsing into a coma, she had managed to write a notebook paper that it was Ray Carruth and pretty much tell investigators what was going on with her case. One month later, Sharika had passed away on December 14, 1999. Authorities had already told Ray if Sharika or her unborn child had passed away, that the charges would be upgraded. I believe at this time, he may have bonded out with the $3 million. Now, I do remember when they had found Ray after being on the run, the FBI had found Ray inside the trunk of a man's car. I watched it <laughs> real time on TV. It was crazy. Ray was arrested in Tennessee in 2001, almost two years after the murder of Sharika. He was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. He had hired a hitman. Now Michael Kennedy, along with Van Brett Watkins. Carruth didn't want to just pay child support. This is what both men had said in court. Michael Kennedy drove the getaway car. Now Michael Kennedy received 10 years and was released in 2011. Van Brett Watkins got a maximum of 50 years and he remains in prison to this day now. In an interview with Scott Fowler, Watkins said, quote, I won't forgive Ray Carruth. I want him dead, unquote. He said he was figuring a way to kill him. So obviously, Watkins has a little bit of animosity, the fact that everyone is now out of jail but him. He'll probably die in there. But you killed four of the people before you claim this was your fifth kill. You deserve to be right where you are. Now, Mr. Carruth was released in 2018 from Samson Correctional Institute and bonded to leave the Carolinas and head to Pennsylvania, where I believe he currently is now. There he's said to live a very quiet life. He works from home using his laptop like most people do now, and he doesn't want to venture out too much because he doesn't want to be recognized. Carruth released a 15-page letter. He apologized for Sharika's death, the damage done to their son, and the damage to the Adams family. He said he wanted a relationship with his son, and he actually said he wanted custody. But Sandra Adams, Sharika's mother, and the baby's grandmother, she had raised this baby into a young man. I'm pretty sure this woman would have fought tooth and nail before that would ever happen. So when Ray was released in 2018, I had read that Sandra Williams, the baby's grandmother, who has forgiven Ray, said that she would be standing right there with his son. My heart had sunk. I was hoping she wouldn't do it for a million reasons. I was wondering what if Ray doesn't acknowledge the child. I was going to be so hurt for him. But then I read she changed her mind for whatever reasons, but she still was hoping that Ray became a part of his son's life. I was hoping what he created and tried to destroy and left put him in existence where he thinks nothing happened 
but he knew something happened. He knows he has a son. Lee was premature, which led to cerebral palsy, permanent brain damage, and other birth defects and challenges. His grandmother expresses, when Lee was 10, he took a hundred steps on his own. And by the time he was 16, he was able to walk on his own. I believe this email was written to a reporter, Scott Fawley, in 2018. Fawley, Fawler written how Caruth had never owned up to the fact that he orchestrated this. He responded, quote, Do you think it's possible for a generally good person to get him or herself involved in such a situation as heart wrenchingly horrible as the one I was in? Or is it your belief that such a person could only be cut from the worst of moles?" Unquote. I have to admit, I have no idea what the hell that means. It's like, yes or no, you know, did you do it? But he just seemed to go all around Texas to get to Atlanta. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like a lot of people feel that he did know what was going on. And in 2021, because this was in 2018, I haven't saw anything to where he admitted he was behind it. I think the crime was so horrible, he can't even say it out loud. And it's easy to just hide and pretend it didn't happen when it did. On June 5th, last week, at 5.30 p.m., Lee had tried on his cap and gown so he knew it fit. He was not going to use his walker, but his favorite teacher would lend their arm and Lee planned to receive his diploma. And he did. Lee smiles always when talking about his mother. When he sees butterflies, he knows it's a sign. His quote, mommy angel, unquote, is looking over him. That's what he refers to his mother as, mommy angel. He says he would like to meet his father in the future. When one of the talk show hosts had asked, what will you say to your father? He said, I will say, hi. Caruth has paid thousands of dollars through the court system and remember he never wanted to pay child support but 20 years later he still is. I swear when I heard it was a graduation I was hoping that Ray would have showed up for the graduation but I did read another article where the grandmother said she had received a significant gift from Ray for his son. I do believe, even though no one really cares what I believe, but I do believe that he needs to admit out loud, even if it's just to Lee, admit what he did. He doesn't understand the weight that would be lifted off of his shoulders. I mean, this kid is literally his twin. At first I thought, no, it's not a good idea, but it is. This young man needs all the love he can get, especially the love from his father. Chandler Lee Adams is actually 22 years old now, and they say in the future he will need round-the-clock hair, but I'm sure he will get what he needs, and I'm sure his life will be as happy as he can make it. He seems like a happy young man every time I see him in every interview. He just always seems so happy and well cared for. Lee was learning at six years advanced and four years in an exceptional children's high school program where they teach the students life skills. And here's a poem I love that the students say, it's called I Will Succeed. 
and Lee had actually recited the poem. And I just think it's so awesome. I will succeed. I am somebody, I can reach my goals. I show respect and I use self-control. I chose to lead, nothing can stop me. I will succeed. And I just think that is so great. I was thinking maybe Ray has arrested development where he just couldn't grow in jail. Every day is the same day when you're on lockdown and I don't know why he just hasn't said what he needed to say. But I will continue to Google periodically and I hope one day that I will see him taking pictures with his twin. I'm sure a lot of people will. I mean, after all, I kind of think he owes it to him. <laughs>